All right, let's begin programming an actual profile. This profile we're going to cut is simply turning a one inch diameter shoulder, one inch long, in a two inch diameter piece of material. This particular profile is going to be made up of six elements. And you can see those on the right hand column of the program review screen. We're going to have a starting point. Then we're going to turn. This starting point is going to be somewhere in front of the part and smaller than the one inch diameter. We're going to then turn into the face of the part, face up to a specific diameter, break that first corner, turn back to the shoulder length of one inch long, come up the face to a position that we're going to pull off the part, and then that will simply end the program. A couple things to point out here. The center line of the part is shown with the red dotted lines, and the very face of the part is our part zero. So when we go into the part, the profile start, um, or the actual block to start writing this program, I'm going to have, there's a separate program going to be available for this particular part. And at that point, we will walk through the tool setup, um, so forth. Here, I just want you to understand how to actually program the part. What kind of rules, what kind of things we have to do. Well, we are on the Geometry Navigation tab. You can see that the Process tab is not highlighted. We are starting with the Geometry tab. And the first thing it asks for is that rapid position that we talked about in uh, uh, the Programming uh, Rules page, or Rules video. That needs to be something that's at a clear position that I can rapid to both before the profile is cut and after the profile is cut. And we'll see some more about that here in a minute. But I'm going to start, I usually start 200 thousandths bigger than the material and 200 thousandths in front of the part. Next we have to program the starting point. Now the starting point that we program and the ending point that we program are going to determine where the roughing takes place as we've seen in previous videos. So what we are actually going to program is the start point of the, of the finished path, if you will. So if I were to draw that profile that we see on the screen, where would I first place my marker or my pen on the piece of paper? It would be in that green dot. And where is that green dot? Well, I want to turn a one inch diameter. So I need to start something smaller than one inch because I'm going to break that corner with some, some uh, chamfer or radius value. And I want to start in front of the part a little bit. I don't want to wrap it into the face of the part. So in this case, I went to 900 thousandths in diameter and 100 thousandths in front of the part. The other column over there is stock allowance. How much material am I leaving on the turn diameters, 20 thousandths, on the face of each part in the z-axis, 5 thousandths, and the stock allowance is how much I'm leaving on radiuses and chamfers. So there's my starting position with my stock allowance. Next, I'm going to move into the part. Anything moving along the z-axis is a turn. Anything moving up and down in the x-axis is a face. In this case, I moved from the original part portion or location. I turned into the face of the part, so I use a turn. Now, it's very important to note that when I selected the next element here, that the element button was actually highlighted. Excuse me, the element field was highlighted. So when I hit the next element button, you see there the second one down, that would take me to the next one. Had the highlight been on the block number, I would have went to the next block, which would have meant that this particular feature had, I wasn't able to finish programming this. So it's very important that you make sure that the cursor is on the element screen as you're moving between these turns, faces, chamfers, and so forth. And again, in the video where you see we program this uh, together, You'll see that. I'll explain a little more in depth. But also notice on a turn, the only thing that I can change is the Z value. Everything else is grayed out. So I put the new value. I moved from 100 thousandths, moved, turned into the part. So I went put a Z of 0 here. I would select next element. That would take me to the face. Now I'm going to program the face. I'm moving up in the x-axis. And I want to put the final diameter. I'm going to put a 
a blend radius on this corner. I want to break the corner. But I'm going to program to the theoretical intersection. The control will know to go ahead and put this next feature, which is going to be a blend arc between two perpendicular or two, two turned features. So I'm basically going to program this face up to a diameter of one inch, which is the theoretical intersection of this uh, shoulder. I'm going to put a blend arc in of 20 thousandths. And then I'm going to do another turn, which takes me to my final depth of a negative one inch. A final face to two inches and ten thousandths. Now remember that I explained that wherever I pull off to, the starting point and the ending point is what's going to determine where the material is. So if I were to have pulled off to two inches and a hundred thousandths, and I only had a 30 thousandths depth of cut, then the control was going to say, well, two inches and 30 thousandths is where he wants to, or excuse me, two inches and 100 thousandths is where we're going to start roughing. I'll drop down 30 thousandths from that for my first pass. Well, I'm going to cut a couple of passes of air. So where you pull off is very important. You want to stay as close to the material as you can with still actually getting some clearance when you do the pull off. So, the start and end points of the profile designate the corner of the material to be cut. That's how the control knows where to begin the roughing. The tool path in the very beginning, whenever we program this rapid position, the tool is going to approach the first roughing pass from the rapid position designated back in element zero, our first starting point. And then from that point, it's going to drop down my roughing path or my roughing uh, depth of cut until it finishes the actual path. When it gets done, it's done the final pass, goes all the way back in the finish pass up to my pull-off position or the, the final point of my profile, it's then going to wrap it back to the designated rapid position. If I had put that rapid position somewhere down below the one inch, then the tool would have wrapped it back down right through the part to that. So you must be very careful about where you're placing that rapid position.